Hello friends, Tony here, welcome. So in the previous video we worked with middleware, we have protected all of the routes. And if I go to register, let's uh, register with a new user. Okay, we can navigate the create page. We can create a new, uh, sorry, the create post, we can create a new post. And then we can view this post. But here we have this edit and delete button. And this is okay for now because this post I have created, so I can uh, edit and delete. But what if I log out and let's register a new user here and visit now this post, which is created by another user. Yeah, we have this edit and delete button. And this is not what we want. What we want is only the user who has created this post can edit and delete this post. Okay, so we need a connection a relationship between user and the post and if i visit the laravel documentation we have eloquent orm and we have relationships here so defining the relationships one to one one to many one to many inverse uh, has one of many has one throw and has many throw also we have a polymorphic relationships but what we want in our case is one to many so user can have many posts one user can has many posts so this is one to many relationship and let's go so a one to many relationship is used to define relationships where a single model is the parent to one or more child models and here we have an example a blog post may have an infinite number of comments but in our case the parent is going to be a user and the child is going to be a post. Okay, so let's start with that. I'm going to open the VS Code and the first thing we need to open the migration, the post migration. Here, because the post is going to be long to the user, we need to add also the user ID in this migration. So let's say dollar sign table. And I'm going to say origin ID or origin ID 4 and pass near the model. For example, a user model. Like this. Okay, you can read more on the Laravel documentation. So if I search for version key, yeah, for example, we can use dollar sign table on sign at big integer user ID and then say it does assign table user id references the id on users or dollar sign table of origin id user underscore id constraint but this is the short version also uh, if you scroll down we have this yeah on update cascade or on delete cascade or chaining cascade on delete okay so if i chain that sorry constraint and also cascade on delete so when the user is deleted also the post belong to that user is going to be deleted okay now because we have ch make changes to this post migration we need to run the php artisan migrate fresh and i have an alias for that so just fresh okay let's clean and let's close this now let's open the mic the, the project refresh yeah we don't have this post let's go and register with a new user create a new post and if I use the fake filter now say store we're going to have the error because the field user ID doesn't have a default value okay and let's go back also here as you can see, we have a relationship. We need to create a relationship method on the model. Here we have an example post with comments. So the post is the parent and this is a child. The child is going to be plural. So the name is going to be plural and is going to return as many relationship. So let's do that. Let's open the user model which is the parent and i'm going to create a method public function post and this is going to return uh, as many relationship 
and say here return this as many passing here the post class okay good now let's open also the post model and here i'm going to also add the user id and then create a public function user now as you can see because the post is the child the relationship method name is going to be singular and this is going to return uh, belong the relationship belongs to relationship okay and return this belongs to the user so this post is going to belong to the user okay let's save that i think we are good now let's open the controller so if i open the post controller on the store method we validate the data and yeah we don't need this which is only the title and the content and we say post create validated but we need also the user id here and yeah we can say for example uh dollar sign validated and i'm going to add also the user id in this array okay passing this auth id which is the id of the authenticated user and this is going to work so if i save that and let's try let's go back here uh, refresh use a fake filler just to save some time and as we can see is created the post but we have also the better way instead of something like this we can use the relationship so auth user which get the authenticated user and then we use the post relationship we created in the user uh, model okay we have created this post method and here we chain that and in this post relationship, we change the create and pass in the validated. And if I save that, or refresh, let's say create and let's say store now, yeah, is created. Okay, we can edit and delete, that's okay. So if I just say update it now. and uh, why we don't return scroll down update yeah we need a return here i have forget to do that so return to post uh, show okay let's return to post show let's go and refresh here and yeah we return here updated now let's remove this updated update yeah we return here okay but what if i log out and let's register with a new user now and visit this post also this one can edit this which is not what we want okay what we want is only the user who has created this post can be able to edit and delete and how we can do that let's go on the edit first here i'm going to show the post edit page only if this post belongs to authenticated user and i'm going to check if the dollar sign post user id is not triple equal to auth id i'm going to abort 403 otherwise return this post now if i save that let's come here i'm going to log out and let's uh, register with a new user okay now this user has no posts if i go to this one and let's say edit this one we have 403 okay forbidden that's okay the same thing we can do also on the update and on the destroy but as you can see uh, this check is almost the same we have done with that uh, middleware before we trying to use middleware okay and we have a better way to do that and the better way is to use laravel policy and if i go to laravel and just search for uh, policy 
policy, so creating policies. We have authorization and policies are classes that organize authorization logic around a particular model or resource. For example, if your application is a blog, you may have an post model and a corresponding post policy that authorize user actions such as creating or updating posts. And this is what we are going to do in the next video. Okay, friends, that's it all about this one. If you like such videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video, share with your friends and see you in the next one. All the best. Thank you very much.